is, this, this is what I think. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, rock and roll and pop music and these idols, it was a religion. It meant so much more than just the songs. It meant a group of people that could come together and even talk about social, political issues or feel like they could be a part of something and change something. And, that, and it was a big group of people like Bowie freaks, glam heads, these people, they had an identity, you know, and, and there's nothing like that in rock and roll that nowadays that gives this kind of identity. And it's a shame because I think rock and roll in the history of like politics even like helped inform people, open up their minds to different ideas, you know. But I'm no expert, but I think it's like a political thing, you know. I think maybe, honestly, there's too much information available about people and, for instance, like David Bowie, all, when he was Ziggy Stardust, all you could do is open up the Melody Maker and there's his picture and there, there he is backstage and he's Ziggy Stardust and there's no YouTube and there's no immediate access. You just sat in your room and you listened to the record and it was a big record and you would just daydream about Ziggy Stardust. And you would go, oh, maybe one day I, I could do something like Ziggy Stardust. But now you just whip open your phone and you're like, shh, oh, they're, oh, they look pretty normal. Like, yeah, whatever, it's pretty cool, whatever. to new music at all. And it's weird because people ask me, you know, they're like, oh, do you like electronic music? Also, it's like, I love electronic music. I love like Aphex Twin, DJ Shadow, all those bands. It's great. And before it, like, you know, Two Boy Army and Gary Newman and, and Depeche Mode and all these, it's, it's awesome. But there's something about modern sound, how people record, how people present, uh, it's weird. I grew up obsessed with garage rock and comps like Back from the Grave and uh, the Trogs and the Kingsmen and all these bands. And there is such a beauty in the raw emotion of garage bands because it's pure emotion, pure raw, whether it's about sex, drugs, or something far stupider. challenges, you know, trying things that are more risky uh, moves. That's why the OCs are so well respected, because they almost get into kraut rock now. They're almost like Can or, you know, Noi or these like weird bands. And it's really cool to see bands uh, doing, doing different things, because it, it, it does get boring. 
when it's just the same thing over and over again. That's the only flaw of garage rock is the repetition. Hey, hey, Monday, goodbye, friend. Orange County is really Republican. It's very right wing. Uh, it's one of the few places in California that are actually Republican because of all the wealth. Some of the parents, they were very wealthy and neglected their children and let them do whatever the hell they wanted to do. And there's a lot of drugs and drinking and stupid stuff for a kid to get into. So there was. You know, the excesses were readily available for wealthy kids, you know. In high school, there was this Michael Cronin, his house. Do you know Michael Cronin? He plays bass in my band. He does his own records. He's fantastic. He, uh, we went to high school together, and he, uh, he had a house that would have house parties. And uh, we had a high school band, and there was this moment where I saw football players from the high school drama kids, weirdos, skateboarder kids, and like punks all come to the show to just dance. And that's why I went, well, this is what I want to do. try to inspire someone to pick up a guitar and make a record themselves. And besides playing and having fun, and that's already happened, so I'm, I'm satisfied now. But for the future, it's like someone in 20 years can put on the record and feel inspired, and that's why you make records, and that's why you keep playing shows. John Dwyer, the OCs, and the Sick Alps, and stuff like that, those guys are legends. So there's no way I could ever say I'm approaching anything differently than those guys because they've already done it all before me. John Dwyer, he's, he's the guy that he's going to be the uh, Rocky Erickson in 15 years. I bet you $50,000. So were you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>